I always remember uh, later on in my life when Alan Ball said something to me. He said, Ozzy, always be surrounded by good players. And I was surrounded by good players. You know, we had a, we hit Dave Sexton had a great formula there. Tommy Dockley started it off. And uh, then uh, Dave took it on. And uh, they were great players. And, and we got to know each other. We knew how everybody played. We looked after each other. And it was just a pleasure to play on a Saturday. It really was, especially at Stamford Bridge. Yet the remarkable thing is, we didn't get you early. You only came here when you were 17. How did you escape the whole youth football net? Well, um, I did come here at 16, actually. Um, but um, the thing, I signed pro at 17 because um, they changed it from 15 to 16 as pro. Um, oh, I was captain of Windsor, captain of Berkshire. Um, and when all the scouts go to watch you play, we used to play at uh, uh, the, the uh, Reading Park uh, ground, which it was in them days. And... Um, and, and I was captain, I scored like 50, 60 goals a season for my club. I did everything right for Spitlow Old Boys, the little club I played for. And, and, the, and the scouts didn't fancy me. And basically, um, my uncle Bob wrote up for me for a trial and they called me the man from uncle. And I was, and Bob Snaishaw, my, my, uh, married my mum's uh, sister. And he was he's Chelsea man. His, his house is called Wind Chelsea. So, I mean, he's going to be over the moon with the result last night. And he is fanatical about it. And uh, he just wrote them for a trial, didn't even tell me. And... Uh, I had to go to Hendon at 11.30 uh, on, a, on a Saturday morning and uh, Dick Foss was taking the uh, trials, about 150 kids, and I thought, what chance have I got here? Because Reading turned me down, and then I had a trial for Arsenal and I ripped the, the forms up, to be honest. I thought, I can't play for Reading, I can't play for Arsenal. And uh, and Bob said, you, you've got to go, Uncle Bob said, you've got to go. And my brother took me there and uh, after half an hour, Dickie Foss pulled me off. He said, you've got to sign some. Would you like to sign with Chelsea? I said, well, why are you doing this, Mr Foss? He said, well, he said, because there's 10 scouts here who want to sign you. And it was just unbelievable, you know, because nobody had fancied me all them years. And uh, all of a sudden, this man saw in half an hour what I'd done. And it was a very short period after that that you were making a debut in a, in a League Cup tie against Workington yeah, Town. Yeah. Yes, it was. It was it awesome, really, to be honest, because I went down there. I was sitting sitting in the dugout. Well, Tommy Dock took me down there. We drew two each, and we got hammered, really, to be honest. I think they were fourth division as well. <laughs> and it, it was a terrible result. It really Typical was. Chelsea. <laughs> well, well it, I didn't realise that. But, uh, you know, I was just, I was just over, overawed with it. And uh, I came back and... Uh, and I played in the replay, and uh, we won 2 0 and I scored two goals here at Stamford Bridge uh, in front of 17,000 people in the fog. But uh, and I, I made me mark. It was fantastic, really. But you didn't play again that season, and then it was the following season that you really got into the team, 65, 66. After just a few games, you forced the then England centre forward Barry Bridges to move to the right wing. Well, I, I think the the, the 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 doc, you know, uh, Tommy was. Um, I was still calling boss today, to be honest. And uh, the boss said to me, he said, "Look, son," he said, uh, "You know, I've got some some strong boys here, but he said I think you're going to make it. I want you to play. I'm going to give you ten games." And he said, don't care how you play, the crowd will have a go at you because Barry Bridges is a big favourite here. And Barry's a lovely... I mean, I love Barry. He was terrific. He was great for me as well in the dressing room. All the lads were. Terry Venables, Barry Bridges, Burt Murray, all the boys, fantastic. And they just said that, uh, you know, I'm going to give you 10 games to prove yourself. And don't care how you play, there's no pressure on you, just play. And then I did, and uh, that was it. We went on from there. And you stayed in the team. And uh, how easy was it? It looked so easy. You were six feet two... You had terrific ball skills. Eyes are blue. Yeah, and you were skinny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's no need for that. <laughs> How you, e you had hair. <laughs> <laughs> How easy did you find it? Well, the, the, the nice thing about it, Neil, was that I went into a good side. I, it's, it's very hard for young players to go into a side that are struggling. You go into a good side. I mean, let's be fair. Benetti, Tamblyn, Burt Murray... Bridges, Venables, McCallioc, you know, all these players were fantastic. Homegrown boys as well. Came through the youth ranks, absolutely adored Chelsea. And that's the big thing in them days. They adored Chelsea football club. They didn't want to play for anybody else. They came for the youth ranks and they did it. And, uh, you know, like Hollins and Boyle and these sort of guys. And that's the sort of people I played with. I mean, I always remember my first game, I was working on the building sites. It's a lovely story. Working on the building sites. And, and I'd, I'd only signed amateur for Chelsea when Dick Foss first signed me. And I used to get £10 a week. That's all I was getting. And anyway, but he, he said to me this week, I got a, a phone call and said that we're playing um, West Ham in the Southern Junior Floodlit Cup, second leg final. And Chelsea had beaten them here 2-0. And they had Harry Redknapp, Marty, uh, Marty Britt, uh, John Sissons. And West Ham were a right good side in them days. We were going across to West Ham. I'm on the building side, so I wasn't training full time. And he dropped a guy called Eric Whittington, a guy from Brighton who was scoring many, many goals. And he said, you're playing. I turned up. I mean, it was ridiculous. And anyway, to cut the story short, we won 3-1. I scored two goals. A guy called Alan Wilkes, I think, scored the other one. 
we came away and Johnny Hollins walked in, gave me my plaque. He said, they are son, you deserve that. And next day I was on the building sites. I was back laboring for my dad that, that next, next day. And that's, that's how, that's how my, my career went sort of thing, you know? And then all of a sudden I'm playing with these great players like Terry Venables and they were superb with me though. Uh, the only thing that I've got to say is that uh, when you have to become a sort of a pre uh, apprentice, you have to go and do the dressing rooms and do the, the terraces. And I hated doing that. I didn't like that. But I also did Ken Chalito's boots. And I always remember one day, and I made sure they were spotless. And all of a sudden, I got a call. I was in the boot room. And uh, where's Osgood? I, oh, I went in and I said, Chalito went, just clean them again, will you? And of course, I walked in there. Everybody started laughing because I knew I was one of the lads. And, uh, and that was my initiation to Chelsea Football Club. It was great. In that first season, that first full season, we were in the old Intercities Fairs Cup, now the UEFA Cup, mm. and we had some fantastic games, and oh. you scored some wonderful goals. Well, again, you know, as I say, we, we had a, a, a Chelsea side, a young side. I think everybody came through the youth ranks, apart from Eddie McCready, I think. I'm, I'm not sure. Um, you know, Cassie and Goal and all these sort of people. But, uh, yeah, we had some great games. We really did. And, uh, I mean, I remember scoring a goal here um, against Milan and uh, playing up front with George Graham. And George was fantastic. I mean, they called him Stroller when he went to midfield. But he was great to play up front with. He could hold the ball up. He was strong. He was good in the air. And, and he could he could lay the ball off and hold it up for you. And uh, he was a great four for me. And, uh, you know, we, we got him great. How great were those European nights? Oh, fantastic. They really were. I mean, we, we played Roma here one night and uh, we won 4-0. And Eddie McCready got sent off. And I think Terry Venable scored a hat-trick. And it was just incredible. And, and I was looking forward to the away game. I thought, you know, this is fantastic. And Tommy Jock said, you're not going, son. He said, I'm not going to put you into that. He said, this is going to be volatile. He said, you don't want to go on this one. And when I saw it, I'm glad I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> and at the beginning of the following season, before your injury, we were top of the league. We were the young team, to be mm, reckoned. Yeah, it was a shame. We went to Man City, we won 4-1. Um, uh, it's a fantastic result away from home. Went to Blackpool on the Monday night and Emily Hughes broke my leg. And... Uh, and they came that we drew one each. Peter Houseman put us in front, and uh, Emily came across, and he did sort me out. I got met, and it was it put me out for a year. And of course, we missed. I missed the 66, 67 Cup final against the Spurs, and also after 10 games, we went top of the league, and that was it. And they bought Tony Hately. Um, things just changed around for me then, and I came back, and I put a lot of weight on. To be honest, you know, it, was, it runs in the family. To be honest, it's not the way I lived, but uh, it just it runs in the family. Is it definitely not the way you live? Because legend uh, would have it you these, enjoyed these, a pint or two during. Oh no, these, these days no. I'm a, a dry white white man now, but so it's still <laughs> not working. But there you are. But uh, no, I did. I, I mean, I played hard. I worked hard. They're, all the lads did. I mean, Dave Sexton. Everybody says they train hard. They never train harder than we did today. Uh, you know, let's be fair. We used to do a cross country, across ups and downs on a Tuesday, and, and really sweat it out you know four and a half five miles and the only thing is Dave used to have to wait for me and Marvin Hinton because the coach used to go and we were about 20 minutes behind but we did it and that was the main thing we did four forties cross countries everything we did and he was a, Dave was was fantastic he was a brilliant coach and and uh, the way he trained you you look forward to training which was great and uh, the only thing is with Dave that he, he couldn't handle managing the players like like I think Mr Ranieri has done today and and the people do Laurie McMenemy and Tommy Tock and these sort of people. How hard was it for you to come back from that injury? It, well it was I was flying I mean there was only one better player on me I think as a young lad was George Best and he was the best let's be fair I mean, he's a legend he was fantastic and uh, unfortunately he's had a rough time George but uh, he's brought it on himself but he admits that I've seen him quite a few times lately he's done at Forest Mill and the, the health club where he's, he's staying uh, he was a genius. He was a genius. And, and I was sort of talked in the same breath as George Best, and that was good enough for me. That was fantastic. Um, but, uh, yeah, it was hard to come back. But at the end of the day, I came back. I always remember one of my first games, we came back and we played um, Southampton here, and we won, We lost 6-2. I scored two goals. I think Chivers scored four, and Ron Davis scored two. And uh, we got beat, say, 6-2 at home. But one of the best goals I ever scored at Stamford, at Stamford Bridge. Yeah, where you beat 4-5. Uh, could have been six. <laughs> Being a modest lad. Um, when Terry Venables left, Charlie Cook went into midfield. Mm. And we weren't quite... He, he was happier. He looked for happier on the flank. And, and we were looking for that kind of successor. And you actually spent about six months, seven months at one stage, back in midfield. Yes. Um, Dave had this, this thought, and he put Huddy on the right wing and um, put me in midfield. And it didn't work. It wasn't. It wasn't the right way. And Dave was t too much of a thinker, to be honest. You know, he he, he was probably another tinker man. You know, who wanted to to try things and, and do this and do that. But it, it didn't work out. And Huddy was one of the best midfield players Chelsea's ever had in their lives. I mean, him and Charlie together were fantastic. 
Um, Charlie used to go wide sometimes. But the only thing Charlie couldn't do was score goals. Apart from that, he could do everything. He could dribble, he could run. He had a great engine. He was quick. Everything was about him was fantastic. Hardy could change a game. All of a sudden, they knock a ball into you and they say, God, look at Ozzy's made five yards. It wasn't the five yards I made. It was the quickness of the ball and the vision of Hardy. And they were two great players together. And don't forget John Hollins in midfield as well, the workhorse. John was fantastic. He had the best engine I've ever seen as a footballer. So you've been in the first team five or six years. We hadn't won anything. We kept going near cup final glory. How much pressure was there on, the t on that team to finally achieve? How frustrating was it that we didn't win silverware between when you got in the first team in well, 69? I don't think there, were, there, was, there was pressure because Chelsea hadn't won anything since 1955, really, to be honest, when they won the league under Roy Bentley and all that famous team, that lovely team, them lovely old boys, which we spent lots of times with recently. We've been to dinners with them, and they're lovely, they're fantastic people. And they are Chelsea, again, mad, mad through and through. And once you play for Chelsea, you seem to get that buzz and you don't want to leave them, you know? Um, we won the, the League Cup, I think, 65, was it, against Leicester? Um, you know, when Eddie McCready played up front. Oh, God. <laughs> um, but fair play to him, he scored a goal as well. And we, we won 3-2 here and we, we got a draw at Leicester. But um, no, there was no pressure on us, really, to be honest, because we knew that at the end of the day, we were a good side. And at the end of the day, something might come. We weren't quite consistent enough to win in the league. But a day-to-day -day basis... We would beat any team in England, there's no doubt about that. Welcome back, the legend Peter Osgood is with me. We've got up to the time when we won the FA Cup for the first time and Ozzy scored in every round. Yes, uh, it was a privilege to do it. I mean, uh, I think uh, there's only about five did it before me. And Jeff Astor did it in 68 for West Brom. Great player, unfortunately Jeff has gone now. And uh, yeah, it was, it, was, it was fantastic and it's quite a feat. But, uh, the reason it's lasted so long is because it's rotation system. Let's be fair. I mean, you know, they've got so many players now, and Henri hasn't played many times in the cup. So, but it's still a privilege. It's still a record. And there were some great goals even that season, weren't there? Yeah, there was. You know, I mean, uh, but the, the the thing that uh, came to me now, what uh, brought it home to us, how good a side we were in them days, was that we played them um, Queens Park Rangers at Loftus Road, and we won four two on a mud heap. You know, four goals. It was a mud heap, as you know. We went to. Uh, White Hart Lane, we played on a terrible pitch. We won 5-1 against Watford. All right, they were third division. We should win that comfortably. But then we went to Wembley and we thought, here we go, billiard table. All of a sudden, it was the horse show two weeks before. And it was an absolute terrible. It was all sand everywhere. It was like playing on a beach. And we scored two goals. 11 goals in three games building up to the cup final. Mm. And I remember in the game at Queen's Park Rangers, and they were top of the, the old second division, now the first division. And after about 10 minutes, we were 2-0 up. I think Dave Weber got one and you got one. And all our players were covered in mud, and theirs weren't. Mm -hmm. Even you. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, they, they had to, to play Barry Bridges and Terry Venables was playing yeah. for them as well, weren't they? Let's be fair. But, uh, yeah, it was a great result. I mean, I think it was, it was never in doubt. Um, but Webby scored, you know, puts in front, and he was a cavalier, wasn't he? Let's be fair. He, he loved to go forward, Webby did, you know, and he used to like to score goals, go up for headers, and he was brave as you like. And then Charlie's knocked this great pill to me, and I just went in and smacked him with left foot, two nil up, and then it was a non-entity from then on, to be honest. How great were those two epic games against Leeds in the FA Cup? Ah, oh, awesome, awesome. I mean, you know, you had to have bottle, you had to have class, you had to have skill, and we had everything. You know, we had uh, the best goalkeeper, I think, in the country, apart from Gordon Banks at the time, Peter Bonetti. Um, uh, same class as Cudicini, let's be fair. I think, you know, Pat Catty was as good as him, and uh, if, if not if not better. You know, he was here for 20 years, and he was a fantastic professional. You had the four assassins at the back, Webb, Dempsey, McCready, Harris. Couldn't play football, but they could not kick, I tell you. They really could. <laughs> and they hurt people, they really did. And they enjoyed doing it as well, you know. <laughs> and we had the geniuses, you see, Charlie Cook. And well, unfortunately, we didn't have Huddy in midfield. But we injured. had Charlie, yeah, he was injured, yeah, that's right. And we had Charlie and uh, Johnny Hollins. And we had a lovely lad called Peter Helsman, who, you know, died in a car crash at 32. Uh, myself, Big Hutch, who, and obviously my best mate, died a few years ago. And uh, little, little, little uh, Geordie boy on the wings, Sponge. <laughs> Tommy, Baldwin. <laughs> Tommy Baldwin. And in the wings, we had uh, Marvin Hinton was our sub, and that was it. Only one sub. Yeah, and, and how great an achievement was the victory? Well, I think Leeds at that time was probably one of the best sides in the world. They, they were fantastic. They had 11 internationals on the pitch. They had one, Paul Maidley, who was sitting on the bench. And uh, it was just an awesome result. It really was. And it's now legendary as well for being a very dirty game. Well, they, uh, I think uh, Hillary, the referee, said he assessed it. I think there have been 15 bookings and eight sending-offs. <laughs> I mean, when you think of the tackles that went in that day, I mean, Eddie McCready kicked 
Billy Bremner in the head in the penalty box. I mean, he never even got a free kick against yeah. him. Incredible, it really So is. here was Peter Osgood, the skillful player, the player who they said was, <laughs> was the lazy one which who didn't get picked for England. Yet you were a hard nut. I put myself about on the field and off it, but, uh, but, uh, <laughs> but uh, no, it was it was I say a great Chelsea side. And we knew we knew we could match them. We matched them for that, and we could do. There was no problem about that. The skill factor we still thought we had as good as them. I mean, they had Jalzy and uh, and Bremer in midfield. They had uh, I mean Eddie Gray, superb player. Dave did a great thing when we played at Wembley. Um, you know, Chopper played at centre half, and Webby got the biggest roast in his life at, at right back up from Eddie Gray. When we went up to Old Trafford, he changed it round and Chopper kicked Eddie Gray after five minutes and he's absolutely larriped him. He really did hurt him big time. And he said, son, that's what you're going to get for the next 85 minutes. <laughs> and he didn't disappoint him over Chopper, I promise you. And, uh, you know, because I always say, he said, oh, everybody says Ozzy won the FA Cup for us because he scored in every round. He said, I won the FA Cup. He said, because I kicked Eddie Gray. And he could be right, to be honest. And one year later, we were lifting the European Cup Winners Cup and Real Madrid were yeah, conquered. I don't think it was the best Real Madrid side ever, but uh, to beat Real Madrid is, 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 is special. And, and to win a trophy is special. And again, we were... We, we, we were just fantastic in cup games. We really were. We could turn it on. You had everything. You had a right foot, you had a left foot, you had a head. You, 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 you could get behind teams, although you weren't as fast after the injury. Did, did you feel that you lacked anything? No, I don't, I don't think so. I think, you know, it made me a wiser player. You know, I, I used to be a slim lad and all that. I used to, I used to have the quickness and all that. You lose a, a little bit of, uh, say, perhaps a yard. But at the end of the day, it's like people like Terry Sheringham. That's why he's gone on so long. Brain brain think about it take people in where they don't want to come take them out and, and come back in and that's what you do you make yourself a yard and that's what i did and uh, over five or six yards i could take somebody on and they wouldn't catch me that that's all i needed i needed a little bit of space to score the goals and that's all, all, all the forwards need and that's why i had you scored goals of genius real genius why did you only play four times for England? Well, that's again, it's the manager, that's the manager of the picture. I mean, Matt Letizier, I think uh, he should have had 30 or 40 caps. You can go through a lot of people now that says, you know, that uh, they should have played for England. Unfortunately, it's the manager that doesn't fancy it. Alf Ramsey, I got on great with him. I played the under-23s many, many times. I was captain for the under-23s. I played the England youth. I, I came through the ranks. I did everything right. But the only thing was, I played nearer when they had a great England side. And let's be fair, Alf was probably too loyal to his, his to his players and he let them get old too often you know too much and, and at the end of the day he should have played more and i always i think it's a great thing an accolade for me from jack charlton who I had many battles with as you know and he said in his book the main thing that elf lacked in 1970 was not playing peter osgood against brazil when he played jeff astor and i think that's a, that's a great compliment 1972 we won two trophies and and we lost the league cup final yeah we lost the week before to orient in the fa mm. cup two nil up with 20 minutes to go three two down was that the end of that team well yeah, it was probably yes yeah that was the end of it i mean let's be fair two nil up uh webby scored an own goal a great goal again but there you are um we lost three two and uh as you say we went out the cup we got beat by stoke i can't believe that we played so well at when we scored we, again in the final I scored a goal against banksy which was great and uh I'm very, very privileged. My record as well. I've scored in every cup final I've played for Chelsea. I scored, you know, in the Southern Junior Flooded Cup. I played it for the reserves against Brentford. We lost 2-1 at Brentford in full fairness <laughs> in the Combination Cup. And then, you know, I went on from there. And I scored in every, every cup I played in. And I think that was fantastic. I think that's what makes you... I'm that sort of player. There's players around who you can say they, they look for the big occasion. They don't turn it on week in, week out which probably I didn't, to be honest, I've got to admit that. But the big occasion, I was ready for it and I wanted to play. But the following season, 72-73, when, when that time side was splitting up and some youngsters were coming in, you actually won Player of the Year. You were like suddenly the grand old daddy. Yeah, well, I think that, that I mean, you know, I love the lads coming through. I, I knew the way that I was treated when I came to Stamford Bridge. As I say, by Terry Venables, Ken Shalito, Barry Bridges, Burma, all these boys, they were fantastic to young boys. And I got that to learn. And I think you can talk to Graham Wilkins, Ian Britton, uh, Tommy Langley, you know, Ray Wilkins and all them sort of boys. I was one of the guys, I love the young lads. And you, they're not, they weren't going to be good enough to take your place that particular time, but they're going to come through. So why, why not nurture them and say, you know, carry on where we left off. And, and that's why Chelsea has been such a good club. Because of your size and because of your skill, you could play different roles. So sometimes you were the target man with the smaller player next to you, the Tommy Baldwin or the Bobby Tamney or the Chris Garland later on. Mm. And sometimes 
you played off the big man, whether it be the Ian Hutchinson or George Graham to be human or Bill Garner, somebody like that. Um, which did you prefer, Alan Burcham? Well, I, I, I preferred playing off the big fella Hutch. They couldn't mark us. They couldn't mark us. Uh, you, you know, well, I think in 1970, I scored 31 goals. Top goal scorer. He scored 28 goals. And he, he was awesome. And, I mean, he, he came here at 22, packed up at 27. Broke every bone in his body. Fantastic lad. And uh, that's that's what upset me a little bit when, when Ken said, you know, and we, let's be fair, bygones are bygones. And it's all gone against us and all that. But when Ken said that, you know, that Hutchinson, Osgood and Hudson didn't, you know, contribute anything to, to Chelsea Football Club. When you see a guy like Hutch, you know, who packed up at 27, had 13 operations in five years, I think that's very sad. And he was awesome. And as I say, he died uh, a year last August. And he was absolutely fantastic. To play up front with, I would have swapped him for Hursty, uh, Franny Lee, anybody. To play up front with him, with Charlie Cook, Peter Houseman, Huddy, knocking balls into us. Oh, couldn't mark us. In the end, you were transferred with some quite bad vibes with Dave Sexton, you and Alan Hudson, and, and he inferred that while Hutch was injured uh, and, and trying to be serious about getting fit again, you lot were out partying and having the good life. Go on, how wild was it? No, it wasn't. I mean, let's be fair. That everybody says that. In all fairness, I I was always not. I'm a country boy, and I will put my hands up. And my mum used to say, "Me, oh mum, bless her, my best supporter in my life." When I saw her lunchtime today, bless her, and she used to say, to "Me, boy, why do they write these things about you?" I said, "Mum, it's, it's papers, and that's the way it goes." Huddy lived in the King's Road. Charlie Cook lived just down the road. Tommy Baldwin lived up there. They were the three Herberts. They really were. <laughs> great lads, my great mates, and they won't want me saying it, but they were the, they were the, they were the boys. When we came away from from an away game, uh, we came home. Uh, me and Marvin Inton was a great. Marvin's one of my best mates, and we used to go out and we used to stay at the Eiffel just down the road because we used to have a few drinks and we, did, we didn't want to drive home. But basically, that was it. I mean, I didn't. I, I lived in Windsor. I never came up to the King's Road or London in, in midweek. I never did. But it's just the thing that the papers got into it, and that's it. You keep in touch with a lot of that team. I do. They're my mates. I love them to death. Uh, how good was it? Did it fulfil itself? No, not really, no. No, I probably think that... Um, I've said it before, and, and, and I'm not just saying it now because we've had a great result. I said that Mr Ranieri has got the best squad that Chelsea's ever had in their lives. When I saw him play in, in November, when he beat Lazio 4 and Newcastle 5, that was the best football I've ever seen Chelsea Football Club play. And I was in awe of him. I thought, I'd love to play there. I'd love to play alongside Jimmy Hasselbeck. That's what I'd love to do in my life. I thought, well, this is a fantastic team. And all of a sudden, Mr. Ranieri changed the team again. I can't believe it. that's what I'm worried about. The tinker, he's so good the tinker. But he's proved us all wrong. And that's fantastic. As I say, he's done it with dignity, he's done everything. But it was, that was the sort of time when I thought, top of the league we went then, didn't we? We went yeah. top of the league as well. Yeah. Um, if you could pick one of your goals to tell people here, this was Peter Osgood, which one would you pick? I think meeting Michael Welsh, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> Which was about 1972. Oh, don't you know? <laughs> when she oozed along the pitch Absolutely. and waved a farewell during yeah. play, and you were too professional to wave back. I was, well, yeah, I know. <laughs> but uh, no, I think um, I, I scored a great goal against uh, AC Milan. Uh, great uh, half volley. George scored as well. George Graham, we won 2 0 here. Um, played against some good sides, played against Barcelona. Um, but uh, I, th I just think that the, the, the one that means the most to me is the diving header, the equaliser in the, the FA Cup against Leeds, a great side. And we went on to win it, and that's what brought us into a little bit of success to Chelsea Football Club. And it was, again, a trademark piece of Chelsea wizardry, the whole goal, wasn't it? Well, it was fantastic. I mean, Hutch uh, crossed over with me. I'll give it to Charlie. Charlie went across. He knocked a ball into me, which was absolutely fantastic. And, it, and it's weird, you know, when you, when you score a goal, it's, it always seems to you, when you think about it, it's in slow motion. And I was diving. It's a diving header, which I thought, I can't believe this. And there's no, nobody near me. And the ball came in, and I just slowly went. And David Harvey, because um, Sprake had played in the first game, hadn't he? And he got dropped because Peter Houseman won through his arms uh, at Wembley. And he never came. I think Sprakey would have come and clapped me. But he never came. And he just gave me that chance to look and see where I wanted to put it. And I sent it in the wrong way. And I just looked across. I thought, I've got to be offside. There's nobody near me. And uh, linesman's flag was... And that was it, and it was special. And for all the ups and downs between in your relationships with people at Chelsea since, the one thing that you've always remained is a Chelsea supporter. I will never, ever be different. 
Um, it's only Ken, unfortunately. And I, I like, still like to sit down the window now and say, let's sort it out and just shake hands and let's say bygones be bygones. I will never stop being a Chelsea supporter. I never have done.